Okay, guys. Uh, so before I proceed to the next law, actually today I'm going to demonstrate to you the new law that can be used to calculate the H fuel. And I just want to make a comparison between the previous law. If you can recall, in our last lecture, we had a, a source of charge, isn't it? A charge that can be a source to find the E field using Coulomb's law and this one can be used for the case of uh, like a point charge uh, case of feeling or infinite line charge and also case of feeling or infinite surface charge as well so you can use the Coulomb's law and also using the same source of charge you can use a Gauss law to find the D field and in this case uh, normally we use for the infinite line charge infinite surface charge and also for volume charge is much easier compared to the Coulomb's law and an E and D field can be related to each other using these equations and likewise if you have a current as a source of the H field we can use the BSL by Sabat law to find the H field using these equations IDL cross AR over 4 pi R squared so this ideal is our current element that can be also other type of current like uh, surface current and also for volume current so for the case of Gauss law guys you know here the Gauss law can be expressed using these equations close integral d dot ds equal to charge enclosed we know that let's say we have um, any surface or Gaussian surface and everything inside the surface we call as charge enclosed and from there we can find the respective D field so same thing for this case of this new law we call it as Ampere circuits law whereby it can be expressed in this equations closed integrations H dot DL equal to the I enclosed alright so this is our current that enclosed within the loop if you can make comparison between the previous uh, Gauss law the Gauss law deal only with the surface area whereby this is your Gaussian surface and meanwhile for the case of ACL they deal with a line and this case we name the line as Empyrean loop so let's say we have a uh, few line current which is infinite right Let's say the first line current very long, actually flowing up in z direction. Let's say doing as i number one, and also for the second line current going down. Let's say i number two, and the third line current pointing out. Let's say i number three. So let's say if I want to find the hash field at any positions so let's say I want to find the field at these positions so we need to draw the loop which is called as Ampere loop and the loop must be the first must be closed and must also pass through the point of interest so let's say I would like to draw the loop as shown here and, and you can see that this is the red line actually it refers to your Amperian loop and the I enclosed guys actually refers to the current that enclosed within this Amperian loop so in this case we know that the I enclosed for this particular loop is equal to the I1 minus I2 because I1 is coming up I2 is down so you can just take the resultant current as shown here so basically this is the idea of the ACL we deal with the current that enclosed within so-called loop as Amperian loop so if you can just uh, compare with the previous law which is a Gauss law is uh, you know quite similar right to the ACL the Gauss law will deal with the surface or Gaussian surface and everything within the the surface we call as a charge that enclosed all right guys so let's proceed to the next part it means that we have 
This means that we have a very long uh, line current that position along the Z axis. Alright. So I want to, and the line current here, guys, actually flowing this direction, I. And I want to actually finding to find the H field at this particular point, at P point. So since this is a long, a very infinite line current, so we can use the ACL as well or MPA circuit's law to find the hash field at this particular point. So using this same equation, we need to draw the loop or the amperon loop that actually must pass through the point and also must be closed. So let's say this is my loop that passed through the point of P and also must be closed, right? So from here we know that from this equation, uh, this and this is your hash field. This is your DL, right? This is your DL. The the loop, and then we know that this DL guy is actually flowing in which direction, and the L here guy actually refers to the phi directions. So we know that the DL here actually in phi R D phi. Assuming that the distance from the line to the point actually is R. And a normal from line to the point actually is R, so we can find the circumference or the loop uh, length equal to R D phi. So, alright. And do we know that H field actually is it in which directions? We don't know yet. Probably the H field could be, right, could be in R component. We don't know. And also the H field also could be in phi component. And also we don't know probably the hash field in Z component. So let's assume we have three components altogether. So if put in this ACL equation from this integration, we know that the integration, so let's say we have the hash R, R component, plus hash V, V component, plus hash Z, Z component. So now, and we times our dot product with the the L which is totally in phi directions confirm so the R D phi and now equal to the I enclosed if you see from this diagram the only I that exists or enclosed within this, this loop is only I so just put I there straight away so now we can do the product, the product between the R and phi the phi and phi and the, the phi and we know that this term will have zero value because R dot phi zero and also zero, also zero. So what if we only have the H that solely in phi directions? So from here we can get the answer. So the H in phi, which is two pi r after you integrate over phi, and now equal to i enclosed, and the H finally gonna have i over two pi r. And since the hash now in phi component, so just put a bar and you can simply put the direction of phi in an of ampere per meter. Alright guys, so this is one example uh, on how we can find the hash field due to the infinite line current. Alright, okay, thank you.